Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our afternoon session of the Allure Treasury Experience. Our next session is going to be moving to a cloud-based TMS, paving the path to a successful cloud TMS with the Allure Treasury Liaison and PMO Director Edmund Glasnap. A few quick reminders before we get started. Attendees have been placed on mute for the presentation. If you have any questions, please submit them in the chat to panelists or in the Q&A portal, and we will answer them at the end. A quick reminder as well to make sure you are connecting with us on our social media platforms, as well as using that hashtag ETE2021, as we'll be doing some drawings at the end of the event. With that, I will pass it over to Edmund. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jordan. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone can see my screen and we can get it, go ahead and get started. Um, I had to run, run to the door because uh, my puppy wanted to say hi. Um, thank you, everyone. I want to go ahead and get started. I have been with Alir for um, almost 10 years. And my previous role, and I kind of threw this out there and kind of made up my own role here as Treasury Practice Liaison is because I, I was a previously a practice lead for the Treasury Advisory Group. Um, and am now more focused on PMO related activities, but I am still very involved and I, I love presenting on treasury related topics. Um, and this is one that um, I love because we've helped a lot of clients kind of provide direction with this. And so with that um, kind of a quick background on where I am and, and what I'm doing with this. So what are we gonna do today? Um, just wanted to, um, walk through this, you know, we did a quick intro. I want to give you guys a quick intro on um, Alir and what, what our treasury, uh, you know, our industry experiences and all that. Um, but then, you know, I'll cut, briefly touch on, you know, treasury management trends that I'm seeing today um, that we've been seeing over the last couple of years, um, you know, when it comes to a cloud TMS. I uh, want to look into, you know, the benefits of moving to a cloud solution. I mean, I think this is something that you're all probably exposed to, but it's it's a good it's good to remind everyone and kind of look at this from that perspective. Um, and then, you know, what are the best practices on getting to a cloud solution in general, but also for treasury, right? Like what, what are we looking at? What have we done? Um, what's the focus been? Um, so, and then hopefully, you know, some, some uh, time for question and answers. Um, so uh, I did want to create, I quickly took a look at the attendees. I really appreciate everyone that's joined. Um, I did a quick shout out to uh, Liz, who, who I saw join from RGA. Really glad to, that you're joining. Um, uh, you, you've always been a, a great, great resource and, and helped out. Um, I know we did a lot of treasury work in the past, so fun to see some familiar faces attending. So, who is Alir? What's our experience? Um, we're celebrating 16 years um, in the business, strong foundation in treasury. Um, you know, we've, we've worked as trusted advisors. That's really our, our, our goal is to be that trusted advisor uh, with over 250 clients and, and really focus 250 TMS and roadmap engagements um, uh, for our clients. And so that's where we've, where we've been. And we, lo we love doing this type of work because it really provides a lot of cl clarity on, on how to move forward uh, with solutions. Uh, we help our clients by partner, partnering with them to implement the software. Uh, we provide that strategic roadmap guidance um, and really focus on best practices and the core processes uh, that, that you are executing uh, in your organization. And you know, we have a deep commitment to excellence and quality. And you know, one thing to call out, you can see some of the, the logos here on the right-hand side. So we, we've been partnered with Oracle for many, many years. Um, and, you know, they really look to us a lot of times for treasury related um, advisory work. Uh, we're Swift, right? We have Swift ready services. We partnered with Swift. Um, Kyriba FIS are, are two of the big TMS uh, partners that we, that we work with. Um, you know, organically, this has happened over the years. We've helped them implement or advise, and um, we've built strong relationships with all of these vendors. And, and that's really how this came, came to be. Um, and we, you know, we've worked with many other vendors and TMS systems as well. Uh, you know, this is kind of just like that, throwing that out there. Some of the clients we've worked with, um, you know, Alir can, we try to, 
we throw this out there to show off. I, I, I love this because I can, I can say that I've been a part of a lot of these projects in here, Navy Fed, Cer Cerner was my very first project as a consultant like 10 years ago. It's, it's fun to see some of this stuff and remind myself of, of where we've come and, and how far we've gotten. So um, that's, that's what that is. It's always fun to see that NASCAR slide. Um, so moving away from the about a year and all that good stuff, um, treasury management trends and cloud TMS, like where are we at? Uh, what have we been seeing? Um, and a lot of stuff hasn't really, you know, a lot of stuff has, isn't that new or hasn't changed necessarily, but the focus has changed. And, you know, that's something um, I'll talk about here in a minute, but uh, what have we seen over the years? We have seen a lot of these vendors consolidate um, something, you know, I remember partnering with Reval years and years ago with Oracle and, and then um, Ion acquired Reval. And so that was, that's, that was a big, big piece. Um, you know, Ion owns a lot of the different solutions that are out there um, and they, they're structured very differently. Coupa uh, last year, I believe uh, acquired Bellin. Bellin was a huge player. I mean, Bellin, Bellin is, a, is a big deal TMS system, really focused, uh, based out of Germany and focused in Europe. Um, and they have a strong system and, and Coupa came in uh, and purchased them. And then bottom line, you know, purchased, acquired uh, Treasury Express. So, you know, these are some of the things we're seeing. Um, it, you know, it comes back to resourcing and the approaches they're taking, right? And how they want to integrate with their existing technology. Um, transitioning to the cloud. I mean, you know, a lot of treasury systems are being implemented as either software as a service, um, and that's what I'm what I'm seeing a lot, right? And then uh, they're also being hosted, you know, on public or even private databases. So that you know, depending on requirements, we might see uh, vendors provide that uh, service offering within their uh, TMS solution. Um, global support, you know. Vendor, these vendors are expanding um, because they're they're getting quite a bit of uh, activity, um, and and there's a huge need to support global organizations and larger organizations in general, right? So these these treasury processes are now being looked at as something that can be standardized across the globe, um, and different you know uh, shared service centers, business units, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, um, and that's really you know, that standardization piece is huge. I can tell you that, you know, with, with, uh, with COVID and everything that's been going on, I mean, everyone knows that, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of resourcing changes happening, uh, good and bad. So, I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of that um, and, and that's, you know, kind of where we're at there. Um, throwing this out there too, you know, what are kind of innovation and trends? And I, the next slide kind of shows the focus, but you know, here are some of the buzzwords and, and some of the things that we've seen. Um, some of this isn't new, right? Some of this is pretty standard stuff, workflow management systems, um, RPA, robotic process automation, real-time data integration. Um, you know, we see a lot of opportunity with cloud solutions to um, implement faster. Um, you know, the classic on-prem implementation can take six to nine months, maybe longer, depending on the scope. Lots of times you can have a lot more quick wins and start actually using a system when it's in a cloud with a cloud infrastructure. Um, sometimes you can't, it really depends on certain things, but that's what we're seeing for some of these TMSs. Um, big data and, 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 you know, everything around big data and the analytics um, and all the solutions around analytics, a lot of that stuff is being um, provided within a TMS uh, or the TMS is driving the data, right? So that, that's something to consider. Um, AI related, you know, innovation, we've, we're seeing that there's a lot of opportunities for AI within some of the treasury processes. Um, API capabilities. Now that's, that's a given. I mean, as, as we, as these TMSs get more mature, they're not the only uh, solutions that your organization are using, right? Your, your, your organizations, I'm sure using an ERP of some sort, there has to be integration, right? And API is really the way uh, we're moving forward, right? So, and then any kind of global capabilities around that as well. 
so where we were and where we are now, like if I look at all those, uh, um, you know, buzzwords and those uh, topics that I just called out, you know, I would, I would argue that before COVID and before kind of the crazy world we're in, you know, there's a really big focus on AI and cybersecurity, robotic process automation, real-time data, and all that is still very relevant. Um, but I think more than ever, some of the more core pieces of treasury are still top of mind and still the most critical, you know, working capital management, like really having a grasp on how to manage working capital is huge, right? That's never going to go away. You know, understanding your liquidity at a, you know, at a global level, um, being able to act on, on changes really quickly. Um, that's huge, you know, and then when you look at things globally, you're looking more at FX and, and interest rate risk, right? Um, cloud-based automation. These are the things that I think are, are still most, most of all top of mind um, for treasurers and for treasury departments and for global organizations. Um, so, you know, those are the things that we're seeing all the time. So moving to the cloud, you know, what are some of the key factors that I like to call out? Um, something that's, that can be difficult to uh, execute on, but, but is, is definitely important to, to consider is, is really letting the TMS solution drive process design. And it's hard because if you're, if you're go coming from an on-prem solution that you've customized and that you've really tailored to meet your needs, right? And then you move to a solution that is more rigid, you can't really customize. Well, then it becomes difficult, but the reality is that these CMS solutions are implementing and using functionality with a best practice approach and they're standardizing it. So it can turn into an opportunity really to standardize. Um, so, so keep that in mind. And you know, how, you know, how do you communicate that, right? Well. Take the time to do some cross-functional mapping. I mean, this is this is like classic business analysis stuff, but but it works. You know, if you can map this stuff out and really show the attributes of your processes and call those out, that's going to be critical. So, you know, that's where my last point here is agreement on guiding principles and tre treasury process attributes. And when I say treasury process attributes, I mean, you know. Where in the process are you running a pro running a technical program? Where when are you running a creating a report? When are you expecting an approval? When are you, um, you know, when are you losing time? Right. I mean, you can capture all these metrics with those attributes, um, and then you know, think about something more on the PM side. You know, I put on my PM hat, guiding principles. If if you have a lot of pushback from internally for change. Well, you can find common ground with guiding principles, right? You can agree that you want a process to be automated, right? How you get there, everyone's gonna have different, different opinions, right? But you can agree on some guiding principles that automation is better than manual work, you know? Um, delivered processes are better than custom processes, right? Like you can agree with those things with those guiding principles, so. Um, so let's look at some key constraints. Stakeholders missing knowledge of future state processes. Um, you know, clearly when, if you're gonna present a new solution and there's no concept of what it's gonna look like in the future, that's when you really get hit with a lot of questions and you really struggle, right? So this is a, a big one, right? This is when you know, you'll have a lot more resistance to change if you don't know what your current process looks like. That's why that cross-functional mapping is gonna be critical, right? And then again, you wanna drive what that vision is gonna be in the future. I mean, that's really gonna be huge. I apologize if you guys hear some uh, busy feet. Uh, my puppy insisted on joining this uh, presentation, um, which, I might, I might let you guys get a vision of him here in a minute. So one thing I wanna call out, okay, what are the benefits of the cloud solution? What, what are you looking at there, right? 
on-prem versus versus uh, a you know like on cloud-based solution, right? So these are kind of more generalized, but but they really do apply to a TMS as well. You know, like you know, on-prem is going to be installed locally on your local servers, on your computers. Um, you know, that's turned into a risk for a lot of people, right? This is a that's that could be a big risk. Um, on the other hand, you might have a lot of support for this, so you might as well do it, right? Enterprise maintains the solution in all related upgrades. Again, this is on you as an organization to make sure you're up to date. Um, there's a lot, lot involved in that, whether it's a TMS or an ERP, whatever it is. Longer implementation times, we, I kind of touched on that earlier. Um, up, upfront expense and maintenance costs um, for, for that support activity. Uh, customizable solutions to fit specific business needs. Lack of flexibility and scalability. Um, a lot of the older systems might not have mobile capabilities. So these are things to consider if you're on-prem, right? What, you know, what, what's it look like in the cloud? Well, you know, a lot of the, the whole purpose as a, uh, as, as a, for a cloud solution really comes down to having the vendor manage a lot of that, a lot of that stuff for you, right? The, the, the servers and how, how you're accessing your system. Um, again, you need to weigh the risks. That might be a risk within your organization. I don't know, right? So think about that. All enterprises um, remain on the latest version. Um, and deploy upgrades and releases. So the vendor does this for you, right? And they, they implement, they, they put it out in, in smaller increments instead of a big bang um, you know, piece. Rapid implementations, I talked touched on that earlier, something to consider. You know, regular expense covering licenses, upgrades and support. So you know, the, the, the fee structure changes here a lot, right? And the cost structure changes. Uh, delivered functionality and configuration, right? I mean, this is really where you need to get used to that they're gonna deliver a solution within, within the TMS that you're gonna have to adapt to versus trying to customize it. Um, flexibility by paying for what is used and scalable to meet demand. You, a lot of times you can pick and choose what you wanna focus on in terms of implementation. Um, and then, and then at the end of the day, these cloud solutions are offering a lot of mobile capabilities. Um, not all of them, but quite a few of them are. So best practices and approach. Um, you know, what, what, what do you need to consider doing um, in your organization? So, you know, I can, I can start this out by, you know, kind of asking some basic questions, you know, are you prepared to make the move? Um, where are you right now? And um, are, you know, are you ready to make the move right now? So what does that look like? You can go and reach out to different um, internally, externally, and just kind of have an understanding of what you need to do next. But we always like to at least break this down in a few steps. You know, we, we try to mobilize the effort to some degree, right? And that might mean just identifying the right people um, you know, making sure that we have the right vision for it, you know, scheduling the work sessions, right? Then, but big piece here is next step is understanding your current state. This is a big one for me. I, I really emphasize this because I really, um, I don't just love to do the mapping and, and, and break down the processes, but I also, this is where you can actually capture data, collect metrics and really show where you are right now, right? So. That involves mapping, that invo involves what we call a disconnect analysis. Um, so anything that impedes uh, the effectiveness or the efficiency of your business processes, we would call out. This is something you can do um, at any stage. It's, it's really a, a great exercise because it lets you visualize um, what changes need to be done. And that ultimately drives your solution analysis, um, understanding what solutions you can use and then you can understand how you can leverage the best practices within your organization, but also within the solution itself. Um, and then we, you know, we, this is our breakdown of what we would need to do. Then, then you take that data and you, you provide a recommendation and that recommendation will have the necessary uh, support because you've done, you've done your work, right? But, so this is what, you know, how we would, we would uh, break down a roadmap um, and how, what I would suggest you do and the actions you should take. 
you know, what, what do you need to consider when you look at these TMS solutions in general? Well, look at, you know, the overall look and feel of each product, right? Look at, look at all the vendors, compare them. Um, look at the costs associated with all these. These are very important questions that you need to ask. Um, what kind of reporting are you gonna get out of the system? Are you gonna to have to customize everything? Are you gonna get uh, delivered reports? Are you gonna be able to provide all the reporting requirements for your regulatory reporting? Um, you know, level of cost and effort to integrate to other critical systems. You, you're gonna want these TMS solutions to integrate to your ERP systems. You, you need to do that, right? So um, that's, a, that's a big one. Uh, lots of times this one just gets completely forgotten and not really addressed or not really built in and planned for, but change management, organizational change management. Like are you, when you implement a new system, are your users gonna be ready to dive into it? Are you gonna have the training in place, the training curriculums, the, you know, how, how do you best, um, how do you best do the analysis on the impact to your organization, right? You're gonna wanna, wanna do some review on how a TMS solution or a cloud solution is gonna impact you, right? Uh, data conversion, you're gonna wanna get historic data in there. That's always, always a pain point, always a disconnect that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, architecture, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna have the architecture in place that you can support um, and you can, ask the vendors how they're gonna address their, their own architecture and how it aligns, right? You wanna have clear understanding of the foundation of the TMS internally, externally, and, and how you wanna move forward with that. So these are things that you definitely wanna consider. So I've talked a lot about treasury processes and called those out. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a, a graphic I've used in the past. You might've seen it already if you're on other sessions, but uh, this is, you know, kind of how a Lear looks at treasury and how a Lear envisions the day in the life of a treasury manager, you know, um, setting up new accounts and daily reporting, performing cash forecasting, reviewing the cash balances, the integrated ERP payments, you know, you're, you're going to want to look at all these processes when you consider a TMS, right? Because this is ultimately what a treasurer and a treasury team is going to be doing. Um, you know, cash sweeps, in-house banking, generating FX, sending the payments. So not just creating the payments, but transmitting the payments, right? Consider that, those requirements. How do you, how are you capturing your debt investment portfolio and all the data around that? Are you actually managing those investments and, and uh, debt instruments in your system? Or is it still on a spreadsheet? Like, how are you capturing the accounting for those, right? All that can be done within a TMS and integrated to your ERP or to your GL. Um, and you need to capture that efficiently, right? Hedging, hedging is a, you know, more, now we're getting into the more complex processes, but can the TMS uh, handle that? Or do you need to have another system support it? Um, you know, and then what are the big items that your teams are really spending a ton of time on? I see bank recon and all the accounting related to, and with exceptions management, that's a huge win. If you can have a process in place for that, that can relieve, you can get people from spending so much time on these things to actually more managing exceptions, huge win, right? So that's, that's what, I'm, what I'm calling out here with these processes. And then ultimately sending that information to the GL um, based on, on the recon, right? Book to bank recon, another complex level of recon that you need to do. And, and then at the end of the day, you need to be able to do the analytics um, on all of this. And, and a lot of this can be done through um, workflow and reporting within the system. So moving on, just kind of some more like strategic and tactical approaches, you know, like if you look at like how those processes are performing within your organization and so that you can kind of evaluate them and map them, you know, we look at design when we look at this as, as what drives those processes. Well, the design of the process clearly has a big impact, right? So that's something to call out. You know, are the, are the specs of that process and the activity within that process mapped out that you need to have that in order to have an efficient uh, process and see, see improvements. 
what are the metrics? Are you capturing metrics for those processes that I just called out? Consider those when you're, when you're, when you're mapping out your roadmap, when you're understanding where you want to be with your cloud TMS, and in general in the cloud, you need to understand some metrics, right? And capture those. Um, who owns those processes, right? Who's accountable, responsible? Um, I'll put on my PM hat, right? Like you, you wanna have a, a RACI built. When you start thinking about this, build a RACI for all the um, departments and process owners and all that. And then you'll be able to identify who's responsible, who's accountable, who needs to be consulted, who needs to stay informed. These are things to consider. Um, who's actually executing the processes? Do they have the skills and the knowledge? Um, do they need the training? This goes back to that change management comment. This is, this is a big piece that you need to consider and is really, really important um, when, when you're considering a big change within your organization. Um, infrastructure, right? Obviously anything technology related, you're gonna have to consider the, the infrastructure that it's gonna be sitting on. How is it gonna be managed? Does it have impact to your HR systems? Um, all of this needs to be considered, right? Uh, and how it integrates. Wanted to throw a little example of metrics. You know, take one of those processes within Treasury. Um, you know, here are just some, some KPIs and, and error rates that I can throw out there that, that are great to capture. If you want to get an idea at how you're doing, um, on the treasury side, you can start thinking about this, you know, cash accuracy of cash forecasts. Like you can, you can calculate this stuff and start capturing this. Accuracy of, of um, investment income. Uh, you can, accuracy of your interest expense, right? You can do all this stuff. Um, operational performance. Um, you can start capturing like uh, daily cash position versus your benchmark, the ratio system generated payments versus manual payments. Um, how long is it taking you know, to get payments out the door? Those are metrics that you can capture. Um, you know, debt management, the all in, all in interest rate um, for your debt instruments versus the benchmark. These are things that are, are critical and these can start driving um, a lot of insight into, your, into how your work is being done and if a TMS could support it, right? Um, so I just wanted to throw these out there. There was a great AFP conference um, deck out there that had, I don't know, like 20 de slide decks with all sorts of great metrics. I, I actually reference it in here. Um, I definitely, um, you know, always tell everyone to look at this. It's really good stuff. And it's surprising because all the implementations I've done, I don't see too many of these metrics being captured all the time. I mean, it is a big effort, but Again, with the technology offered today and the TMS is out there, um, this can kind of support, can, can, can support your efforts. So now taking a different analytical ap approach, you know, measuring where you're at, you know, and, and we call that measuring, you know, the maturity of the processes. You know, we look at it on a continuum. You know, is, it, is your process informal? Is it unorganized? Is it chaotic? No defined process. You know, we see a lot of very unique processes or things being executed within an organization. And maybe it's like a, a, this like hero resource you have that just on the fly can fix issues and they can do it. And there's no real process in, um, identified, but that's how it's addressed, you know? Um, is the process functional? Does it operate consistently? Um, is it reliable, uh, predictable, manageable? These are things to consider when you're kind of measuring everything out. You know, is it standardized? You know, that, that to me means it's high performing. There's an end-to-end -end design. It, it yields a lot of performance, right? Again, like if you have the design in place, you have the metrics reviewed, you know who owns it, you know who's executing the process, you know the technology and infrastructure underneath that process, well, now we're talking about a standardized process that can really be driven. Um, and that's what ultimately you wanna to get to with the TMS, right? And you can take this even further as a collaborative, you know, how is it integrating with other systems within your organization? Again, your TMS should be able to push the needle on your internal processes. That's really what you wanna look, look for. And then ultimately, if you can get here, you know, a leading, 
uh, process maturity means that you're, you know, your processes are extending outside of the organization um, and really su even supporting a lot of what the suppliers do um, that are supplying you. Um, you know, putting this all together, you can, you can build a, a, a matrix here where you lay out your, your processes on the left-hand side. Um, you know, we can talk about cash forecasting, intercompany transactions, um, trade execution, debt and accounting investment, dashboard and analytics and reporting. You can look at all these things and break it down. So then you can just throw it out here and kind of try to measure this up, right? Um, you might be at a functional level for your cash forecasting, but you really want to be collaborative, right? And this makes sense for cash forecasting, right? You might be collecting data in a spreadsheet right now, um, but you need the data updated real time from all different departments so you can truly see where your cash is right now and, and where you want to be. So looking at that actual versus forecasted um, you know, report. TMS should be able to support that, especially if it integrates throughout your organization, right? Intercompany transactions, you know, this might be something you look into, you break this down, and you're not really going to move away from here. It's pretty standardized, and that's where you're at, right? Reconcil recon, right? Bank recon. This is a, a big one I talked about earlier. Huge opportunity where I see TMS systems uh, push the needle, right? Again, internally, you can look at where you are and if you're at a functional level, that might be great, but you should be able to push this out um, and, and move, push the needle, especially by adding a TMS and really looking at your internal processes. Again, not all these items might be fixed by just doing a TMS, right? You need to consider the change management piece of this, the, the business process side of this, right? That all, all really matters. Trade execution, you know, this could be a very informal process. You know, you're, you're just, you're calling the broker, you're, you're executing a trade within, very manually within a uh, you know, terminal. I don't know what you're doing, but you could maybe standardize the process and, and really drive that. And that, can, that could also be supported through a TMS. I'm seeing a lot of these TMS vendors actually um, partner with, with, you know, uh, Bloomberg and Reuters and in and, and all the in a lot of the uh, big other organizations and and they're really odd, starting to automate a lot of this trade execution. Um, so whereas it used to have to be you used to have to have a lot of activity around investments and debt to see value in automation, I, I do believe that that's that's now leveling out a little bit and, and you're having more opportunities with the technology. Accounting, right? I mean, I, again, debt and investment accounting. This is, I see a lot of organizations do this manually. I mean, their portfolios might be smaller. You don't need to, you don't really need to justify a lot of uh, automation. Um, but there's, you know, again, there's opportunities within these TMS solutions to push the needle. So that's, you know, kind of what I'm looking at. Same thing with um, dashboards and analytics, um, you know see where you can where you can make some growth and movement and really mature that process. So I just broke all this down. I've been talking a lot. It's these presentations sometimes get um, a little bit dry and it gets really like abstract. Um, I did want to kind of pivot here a little bit and show you all kind of a demo of what like a disconnect analysis looks like, a treasury disconnect analysis. And, and the reason I wanna do that is because first of all, it makes these presentations a little bit more um, exciting and fun. Uh, but second of all, it is pretty cool and relevant because when you do your analysis, figuring out how to like collect the data and really get this into one spot and really understand it is, is huge, right? It really can make some, drive some decision-making. So, when I go into a current state analysis and I'm doing all my process mapping and I'm, I'm doing all that. And remember, I called out identifying attributes and, and understanding what the disconnect is. And the disconnect is really just a pain point, right? 
And, and the goal is that that pain point turns into a requirement. And then how do I align that with the technology I'm looking at? But here you can see this dashboard that, um, and this is a demo dashboard that I put together. You know, this is an engage, like envision an engagement where I figured out that we had 253 disconnects. We conducted 13 workshops. We reviewed 13 business processes. But you know, underneath those business processes, we had sub processes that we had to look at, and you know, we engaged 29 client resources, right? And then you know, I figured out that you know, 84 percent of all those disconnects could be solved with the TMS. Um, Five percent absolutely could not be solved. There was no that was a, a different thing, right? And then we had some partial uh, solutions identified. And so I threw this in here again. I just, I, uh, we don't need to go dive into this, but as an example, these are our 13 business processes that we would, would have looked at, right? And if I focus on this top one, setting up new accounts and daily reporting, right? What does that look like? Um, that's, what I, that's what I'm getting at here. I can break these down and really start looking at them. So, Again, what is a disconnect? Well, it's anything that impedes effectiveness, efficiency, or adaptability of a business process. Um, you know, and these disconnects that I'm calling out, they can be at the organizational level, they can be at the process level, and they can be at the job performer level. And that's important to know because it really ultimately drives how I should approach a solution, right? I mean, I really need to look at it at those three levels. I can also slice this up and go a little bit further and, and look at it at these disconnect categories, right? So if I look at these, all these disconnects, I'm like, okay, how much are strategy related? How much are policy related? How, how much are organizational structure related, right? And then in this example, you can see a lot of them fell into information flow, process flow. Um, and then we looked at Skills were a big one, input supplier, roles and responsibilities, and then none in job environment, right? And breaking this down again with this to support, to support it really can drive the solutioning and your future state design, right? So this is why I love doing this because now, now you can start seeing, okay, at my organization, 50 per, 54% of the disconnects, the issues that I'm running into every day are really information flow related. 28 are process flow related. Well, these two categories really are covered a lot within a TMS, right? So then, okay, I look at all those business processes. Where did I have the most disconnects? Well, most of them fell under sending payments to the bank, right? But I had a huge amount still 14% of them falling under setting up new accounts and daily reporting. And so, you know, I can start to break down where I'm seeing the most disconnects. And again, I'm not even getting into requirements. I'm just saying this, these are pain points. These are things that I, that I, that I'm noticing are, are, are hurting us. Right. Well, taking this data and then starting the what I call a future state assessment, which is really more about the solution now, right? I can take that data and I can start looking at it. And again, I summarize the information here, but then here, this key solution analysis piece, I'm really saying, okay, for all that, I identified 12 primary um, solutions, unique solutions, right? And within all those dis disconnects, I assigned those solutions to those. And then I also, I also identify supporting solutions and I'll get to that here in a minute. Again, the solutions come from that data and that analysis I just did. And, and the solutions could be, as an example, could be bank rationalization efforts, business process redesign, organizational change management. Again, I call out, that's a big one and that's important, right? Training initiatives, okay, but a big one fell under a TMS category, right? As an example, right? So a lot of them were really information and data flow issues, which a TMS would support, right? But 
we also had treasury regional centers. We could have in-house banking as a solution. Cloud ERP optimization. Your ERP might need to be set up differently to support some of these processes, right? A payment hub, right? A payment hub might be <laughs> the issue you have all these uh, sending to payment disconnects, right? I mean, that's, that's the solution you need to identify. And then more technical, you might see like a Bloomberg or another vendor come up. You might see um, an interface API related stuff come up. And then one thing that I, that I call out is simply, well, a TMS alone isn't your solution, right? You can't just implement a TMS and all your disconnects disappear. Well, plain and simple, a TMS needs to be supported by a secondary set of solutions, right? So a TMS with, with a regional treasury center and organizational change management, now you have kind of a big picture approach and solution for your future state. Um, and that ultimately is what's gonna, gonna really benefit you, right? And so this analysis is done big picture across all your processes, but it really starts out in those sessions, right? And in those sessions, you know, again, focusing on setting up new accounts for daily reporting, I might capture this, I will capture the same data on the solutioning. And I can see here that, you know, a TMS provided, you know, addressed 25 of those disconnects, 34%, um, you know, bank rationalization clearly has a lot to do with setting up new accounts and daily reporting. Well, if you, you come to me as a client and you say, you know, we really don't have a great way of organizing and capturing our open versus closed bank accounts. We have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of bank accounts and they're changing all the time. We're, you know, we're dealing with regional, small regional blend banks and all that stuff. Well, a TMS needs to help you organize that and rationalizing before you start loading all those banks into your, into your TMS is huge, right? That's, that's really gonna drive um, efforts. But you can dive into, and I will dive into this particular example, is like, what does that look like at the process level and not big picture level? Well, again, I do the same type of analysis and I can say, well, 77% of your disconnects can be, can be solved, right? Uh, uh, seven of them only partially. And what does that look like? Well, again, we're seeing process level disconnects. We're seeing a lot of information flow disconnects, but you know, we, it looks like here in this example, there were some job performer level pieces and some roles and responsibilities. So maybe we need to restructure how the roles and responsibilities of who's opening and closing banks and, and accounts, right? Um, and so again, I'm looking at a, at a big picture process of setting up new accounts and daily reporting. I might dive into that even deeper and say, okay, bank account structure alone, what's that look like in your organization? Well, a lot of information flow, organizational structure disconnects. Bank account management, what does that look like? Um, you know, again, a lot more information flow and process flow disconnects. Signatory management, information flow, policy related, disconnects and strategy related disconnects. So here's a, a nice flavor of a process that really touches on a lot of different types of disconnects, which will ultimately translate to a lot of different types of requirements, right? Not just TMS related, but also organizationally uh, you, that need to be addressed at an organizational level. And again, within that process, I might break down the solutions, um, again, TMS coming in pretty high, but rationalization coming up even higher, process redesign, interfaces, right? Uh, regional treasury centers, that, you know, that, that's, that is a more strategic solution, you know, that a TMS isn't going to uh, fix for you, but it'll definitely support it um, depending on how, you, how scalable the TMS is and how you expand. Um, and then, you know, again, I really want to emphasize that the TMS alone doesn't solve everything. It really needs to be supported by other solutions, right? Again, you know, bank rationalization, organizational change management, and TMS, is the, are, those are the primary solutions. But each one of those disconnects needed a second solution here. 
you know, and I might even take it even further and, you know, literally build a report line by line where you call out the issue, the disconnect, right? And you start, this is how we capture that data, right? And we start capturing all this information. And so instead of going into a very straightforward requirements gathering session, take a perspective of where you're categorizing the disconnect and then you can build the, the requirement. So kind of pulling this all back um, and really stepping back, doing this type of uh, analysis and this type of uh, a review is really where you start to see, you know, your processes move from a functional level to a collaborative level, because now you're understanding where you are today, right? And then you can ultimately drive where you want to be. Uh, going forward, right? So, I mean, this is really what I'm getting at, and and I hope that's uh, I hope I was able able to convey that with that um, that demo. So, few few last items um, that I wanted to call out, you know, you know, the process maturity equation, you know, best practices uh, equal successful strategic planning. So, again, you know, that's ultimately what I'm getting at here is that. Um, what are what what steps can you take to start you know moving in the right direction, um, you know defining the business objectives and setting deadlines. I mean again, at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff comes back to just uh, the strategic approach and like kind of putting a PM hat on and really looking at it from that perspective and doing the analysis. Well, set your business objectives and set some deadlines on how you want to move forward. Um, you know, tactically and strategically. How are you going to approach those objectives, right? You, you need to write it out. I mean, you can't, you have to have to think this way. Um, the vendors are going to tell you they can fix everything. It's, they're not going to say they can't fix something. Um, so you need to approach it uh, tactically and strategically and understand your processes before you start implementing, right? I mean, that's, that's a big piece. Identify the KPIs, those metrics, right, that you want to use. Um, and those will support your strategic approach. And they're also going to, they're also going to set expectations, right? They're going to set expectations on what improvements you want to see. So that's, that's a big one that I like to emphasize as well. Um, you know, do measure your current performance for each process. Understand where you're at. Understand how well it's working. See if you can throw it on, on, a, on a scale. You don't have to do all the analytics. You know, you, you can get pretty detailed and, and, and intense with like a true process maturity analysis and all that stuff. But, but you can also just at a high level, see where you land with your internal processes. And just that's a starting point. Just start there, right? You can do that. Um, decide the required maturity level uh, and how in, for each one of those enablers, if you want to get more detailed, you know, you take your process and you understand the design and you measure the design. Where's the design at with this? Did we even write up a design for how you do a cash forecast? Or is it just something that people just do? They know how to do it. It's not that hard. Well, you'd be surprised just defining those designs, then defining the metrics you want to calculate then really just writing down who owns the process, who's executing it. Those things are, can really drive um, clear direction on where you are and, and where you wanna be in terms of process performance. Um, and then you can see where the cloud TMS fits in, right? That's, that's gonna be the a critical insight right there. Um, so analyze the results of your maturity assessment each process should have its own strategic plan in place. Absolutely. So you've done your analysis, you've reviewed things, even if it's at a high level. Well, each one of those processes, you should have a plan for each one of them. Don't, don't do a blanket plan for all of it. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but, but you're going to want to be precise and look at it because that's really going to allow you to move forward. Um, 
and yeah, the last one is pretty just straightforward. It's more just like create a holistic plan. You want you want to have a big picture plan of what you want to do once you figured out the approach for each process, and then you want to take some action. You know, again, circling back to just those objectives and those deadlines and moving forward. Um, you know, these are some of the things I remind myself of when I'm taking these approaches. I, you know, I think it's benefit official for um, you as the business user and leader to, to re remind yourself of this stuff. A lot of this stuff, it might seem obvious, but, but it is something to review and, and look at again. Um, and so it's, it's definitely very important. And so again, breaking this down to the simplest level, identify the solutions for your pain points, um, you know, look at your process maturity and how to make those improvements. And at the end of the day, those two things really drive your, your strategic planning and the success uh, for, the, for that strategic planning. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, you know, again, we're seeing a lot more solutions moving to the cloud. TMS solutions absolutely are moving to the cloud. The top vendors are all in the cloud. That's a given. Um, you know, TMS offers a unique opportunity opportunity for treasury process redesign. Again, it is, it is, it's hard, it's sometimes a hard pill to swallow, but it is an opportunity to take a look at your internal processes because you're you're going to have less opportunity to customize and pivot your system. What you are going to be able to do is take a fresh look at how you're doing a lot of the processes. Um, you know, and then a TMS vendor assessment, you know, that kind of breaks through a lot of what I showed you today. It really provides a lot of the qualitative and quantitative um, pieces that you need to really identify best practices within your treasury organization. It's it's really beneficial to do this, um, and it's it's something that that you can use over and over again to drive success um, for you know making change. Uh, staying up, stay up to date with treasury trends and the shift to cloud by partnering with your trusted advisors and local experts. If you have um, if you have consultants that you've used, if you have internally resources that are that are available to kind of review this, there's you know organizations are doing these moves to the cloud all the time, and different departments are doing them. There are similarities, so you know you as a treasury expert might want to touch base with the ERP financials uh, teams. We you know we provide these services obviously all the time, but start somewhere, you know, start the conversation um, and, and look at that. And, you know, obviously we're, we're always here to help as well. So with that said, um, I do wanna make sure I'm not forgetting, uh, we have a Hariba session uh, coming up next. Um, great way to get like insight with the actual vendor. So keep that in mind. I think it's a, a great opportunity. Um, I believe the link should be in the chat. Let me, let me validate that. Yes, thank you, Jordan. Um, so Jordan sent out the link. If, if you all want to join and listen in, please do that. I really um, want to thank everyone um, that joined today. And I, I do want to open up for questions and answers um, and go from there. So thank you, everyone. Let's see here. There is a question in the Q&A, admin. It says, what percentage of your TMS projects are conversions from on-prem to cloud solutions? That's a great question. Um, I, would, I would say that really for what I've experienced and what I've seen, um, I would say over 90%. So I would say primarily uh, we're seeing on-prem solutions. Uh, and, and when I say that, I can be very specific. I'm seeing a lot of ERP systems that support a treasury processes. And I'm seeing those treasury folks want to move to a cloud solution. However, I can also tell you that um, I have an existing engagement right now where we're optimizing an existing cloud solution. And so the, the client came to us and said, you know, from a treasury process perspective, are we actually doing the best we can in the cloud solution? And then we took that approach too. So 
So, but primarily it is an on-prem to cloud solution. Um, and there are some, I would, I would also call out that there are some where it's actually almost like they had no true TMS solution and we're helping them get to the cloud. That's another one. And we are going to have to go ahead and wrap up just to give everyone time to join that next session. A couple quick reminders. Thank you so much, Edmund, for presenting today and everyone for joining. Again, make sure to use that ETE2021 hashtag on Twitter and LinkedIn. I mentioned it in the chat, but the recorded version of this session will be available next week and the slides are available upon request. You can email either myself or that ETE2021 at alir.com and we can definitely get those slides your way. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone.